starting something new. New project? New project. Okay. If I get to be successful, what am I going to do with it? I'm going to make sure that my kids get more clothes, or I'm going to get a bigger house, or, and that's all fine. You can want to be a trillionaire, but that's not a problem. You can want to be no all over the world, that's not a problem. The only thing is, we have to remember that what I want from me, there has to be something that the rest of If we always understand that what we have, whatever we get, yes, I want, I want the whole world. Why not? But I also want the world for you. I also want the capacity to share with what I have. And so under those conditions, I can accept it. you a question. Is the Messiah a person? Do you believe it's a person or is this it is it a state of collective consciousness? Good question. The answer is that it's a state of collective consciousness. But there will be a symbol to prove to us that such a thing exists. And there's a whole story in the, in the Zohar that talks about how that will happen. And this is something I thought you might want to know. That we talk about today women's empowerment, women's rights, etc. That's okay. It says that when the world of Malkut, which is female, who relates to the female, reaches a level that she is on a par with the male, where there's intellectual respect for each other, where, where businesses are sort of like people, where the rights are equal, this will be a sign that we're closer to the time of the Messiah. And what do we see today? We've seen more women in politics, in business, in whatever. The reason when we look at that and we say, well, this, is, this means that we're close. We are close. And there are, there are so many different uh, allusions to it, the, the books alluding to that fact. But there will be a symbol. And what will be a symbol? That there will rise a a, a, a spiritual being, okay? And then the gates will open up and allow the people to go through this particular gate into the city of Jerusalem, sort of like a rod that they place down and the light certainly goes from end to end. But it's not, that's not the be -all. that is the end. The collective consciousness is what creates the place that such a thing can happen. It would be something that happens only in the final end. Yes, it may be a person, and it may be a million people, or a hundred thousand people that walk through those gates. But that's not the important thing. The important thing is this totality of a collective consciousness. And that's why it's so important that we here at the center and all over where they're doing spiritual work, go forward and teach and bring in more people. Because we don't know how many people that would take. We have no idea. So all we can do is do as much as we can to make that happen and to create a tipping point that will allow such a thing to take place. Thank you. Thank you, What's uh, one concept, tool, or practice that you think um, maybe isn't taught as much or is kind of buried that you'd like to see come to light and, and to awareness more? Well, I think the most important tool we have, if you want to call it a tool, aside from what we learn and aside from everything else, is to practice non-judgmentalist, not to judge people. If we can learn not to judge people, we have an open door. It's far greater to be non-judgmental than it is to read a book. It's far greater to watch what comes out of our mouth than what goes into our mouth. The most important thing we have to do is to try to treat each other in a way that we want to be treated. And the way to do that is, you know, we have, we have decided how everybody else in the world, not all of us, but some of us, how they should live, how they should work, what they should do, I don't want to talk about politics, things like that. We make, we have judgments, but we need 
to have people around us, and even people that we see that we believe are going the wrong way. If you try to shine a light on them, don't judge them because we don't know what their process is, what their color is. Maybe they had to go through the things that they went through. Maybe it's possible that where they are, whatever it is, they needed that as a test to see where they're going to wind up. Because remember, as you learn and grow, you will learn that there is no such thing as victims. We're all volunteers. We came back here. So everybody needs to do what they do. We have a question from uh, Jacob, a New York community member. What advice does Karen have for long distance relationships? <laughs> Move closer. <laughs> As we joke, right? The guy says, I've been married 50 years. And how do you get married 50 years? She said, well, when we first married, I took my wife to Hong Kong. And now we're celebrating our 50th anniversary. Said, wow. She says, yeah, I'm going to pick her up. <laughs> so, so, long distance relationships can work for a while, but if you really want to make something, I think you have to sort of wait to take it together if, if you're talking about a romantic relationship, okay? Um, and sometimes it's difficult because you have a, a business in one place and you're, and you're there, and, and then you're halfway around the world in another place. I mean, it's, it's probably uh, decent that way because it's less time to argue with But to know a person and to get to a place where you have a bonding relationship, you need to be together. You must be together. Not always, but most of the time. Any tips that Karen can give to get to, to know, do you have to be next to each other physically in order to know each other? Or is there tips that Karen can give for like, how can we know each other long distance? Well, sure, you've got Zoom. You sit down and you talk to each other, and that's great. But, you know, when, until you're sitting next to somebody, or they're sitting next to your mother, you're sitting next to her mother, and your family is around, and if you have kids, your kids are there in that relationship. Until you see how they interact as a whole, how are you going to create a relationship? Because you want somebody, if it's a marriage relationship, that it's hopefully in harmony with you. So, yes. Because it's much easier to be nice on the weekend than it is to be nice if you're there all the time. You know? Thank you.